Greetings, everyone. Well, it's that time again. Package opening time. This time around... Oh, boy! I should have lifted with my knees on that one. Got a massive package from Skin Slip. Now, th this may not look massive, but you, you can't feel the weight on this thing. Uh, it, it's when I get packages like this that are so dense and heavy and full of dark matter that I'm glad they installed the package drop-off boxes uh, by my post office box uh, so that I don't have to go all the way to the post office and then cart them home. Um, I just got to go down the hall, pick them up, drag them back to here. But um, yeah, so anyway, this is a package that uh, SkinSip's been working on for a very long time. A lot of goodies in here that she's been amassing for literally years. <laughs> There's some stuff in here that was set aside for me uh, as far back as I think 2013 um, and there's some stuff here that was supposed to be in Stoud Man's package but Stoud Man forgot so he sent them to Skin Slip to send to me <laughs> so this is a everything that was meant to be sent to me plus a whole bunch of other things package and um, I know what at least a couple of the things are. Everything else, I have no clue. It's it's a total mystery. So we got a lot to go through here. This is a big package. I mean, I can tell just from the weight. There's a shit ton of stuff in here. So let's not waste any time. Package from Skin Slip today on the Multimedia Chronicles. <laughs> back okay well let's start off here by uh we'll just take off the customs label and uh oh and there's my address and skin slips address in plain view let's uh we'll just move the box down shall we actually hold on what we'll do is uh we'll open it up here first and then we'll move it down to the floor. Always cut towards your vital organs for maximum safety. And there we go. Okay, we're good. All right, so I'm gonna put it down here so you can't see our addresses. And here we go. Okay, so starting from the top. Wow, this is like this is like how my mom packages things. Like, let me just show you real quick. This will give away a couple things on top, but show you like how densely this is packaged like it, it, it's like a tetris puzzle of packaging <laughs> okay so first up we have oh this is cool we got a couple of beetlejuice figures very nice um i'm just gonna they're in a protective bag here i'm just gonna open this up very carefully we won't take them all all the way out but at least enough that you can see them so we got uh it looks like these are based on the cartoon which i love so we got beetlejuice there as a kind of snake charmer character and then of course we have the lovely lydia there you go and oh actually beetlejuice is there as well behind her so they're kind of like together like a little pillar of people um interesting oh and then on the back of this one is is like the uh the snake thing i guess these are both like they're like double figures depending which way you face them that's kind of neat two in one gotta love it i'm just gonna put those back in there to preserve them forever but uh, that's very cool i mean i definitely love anything beetlejuice um with our cartoon viewings that we've been doing on Twitch, I know at some point we're actually going to watch the uh, the Beetlejuice cartoon. Possibly around Halloween, we'll we'll watch a bunch of those, and uh, should be a good time. Next up, we got another baggie of stuff. Looks like uh, looks like a Gundam and some kind of Transformers. Well, let's let's open it up here and we'll check it out. So we got. Uh, so we got this guy, who, uh, let's see, there we go. Yeah, okay, this, this guy definitely looks like, looks like a Gundam. 
to me. Very cool. There's so much Gundam I haven't seen, but I, I definitely love what I have seen. I've seen the, the original series a couple of times. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam. Is this other shoulder piece in here? Yeah, here it is. This looks like his shoulder piece fell off. Let's see if we can... Uh, how does that go on? Go like that. And then... Like... <laughs> I don't know how this is supposed to go on. Uh, does it just go on? Oh, it goes over the arm like that. There we go. There we go. We got it. Okay. There we go. Very nice. Fully armored, ready for battle. Lots of uh, moving parts here and like vents and stuff. And that's that's very cool. Very nice. And then we got a couple more uh, little dudes here. We got uh, some something. I don't know what this is. This like feet. Uh, it's it's like a plane, but it's like it it looks like it has robot parts. I'm so confused. Anyway, we got we got this. I'll figure out how is it okay. Bends down like that. So obviously this is meant to transform. Into some, I'm guessing it's a part of something that uh, is several pieces. Yeah, see, here's another. See, here's another plane. Like that, very cool. And then, oh, and then then here's a big honking shield, which I'm guessing goes with uh, this dude. I'm guessing he holds this somehow. Does his hand, do, do his hands move? No. Hold on, we do this. Kinda. <laughs> I think he's holding it upside down. <laughs> there we go. Derpy shield in effect. Very good. <laughs> Did I just dump pieces all over the foot? No, okay, they're still in the bag. And then we got uh, a couple other random pieces here. We got a, we got a gun, and we got. Oh, I guess this is supposed to be like a laser blast coming out of the gun or something. Just like a big turd of red plastic, and then a couple of other random pieces. Looks like uh, maybe like a, another gun. It has a little clip on it. So yeah. Anyway, cool. <laughs> I'm definitely going to keep all these in the bag because we don't want to uh, lose any of those pieces. I think I'll take this shield off too. It's a little precarious. So very cool. Very cool indeed. I don't recognize the model. I'm guessing it's probably from one of the Gundams I haven't seen. I'm assuming Gundam Wing because I know that one was hugely popular over here. So very neat. All right. And then a note that says, read immediately. No, it says read. Can you see that? It says, but it says read after, anyway. And spoiler. So we'll uh, set that aside. Okay, so going from the top here. Looks like we have a stack of movies. Let's see what we got here. So we'll start at the top. We have Lethal Hunter. All right. This is, they'll stop at nothing to get the film. He'll stop at nothing to get them. Starring Christopher Mitchum, Mike Abbott, Peter O'Brien, and Bill Superfoot Wallace. Awesome. Lethal Hunter is Widerum in Oitzenig, an explosive acti film. Uit Indonesi. Oh, so it's an Indonesian action film. Okay. Van Cult Regisseur Erizal met Hoofred Hoof Rollin for Chris Mitchum, Mike Abbott, and Bill Superfoot Wallace. Vor der Erst Kier Uit op DVD Gepresentiert Dor OMG Entertainment and the GG TMC community. Cool. 
I know Skins Live likes obscure action movies, so I'm assuming that's uh, that's the deal there. Oh, what do we have here? <laughs> we have The Simpsons Couch and a bunch of transfers for it. Very nice. Random Simpsons stuff. Excellent. I like it. Oh, it's stickers. Okay. So you can stick them on the couch and then never be able to take them off again. Excellent. <laughs> Oh, sweet. Well, you know I love any kind of collection like this. We have eight Spaghetti Westerns. Nice collection here. What do we got? We got uh, Blood Money with Lee Van Cleef. Bounty Killer, uh, The Bounty Killer. Sartana in the Valley of Death. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a knockoff at all. Sundance Cassidy and Butch the Kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we have Wanted with Giuliano Gemma, not the uh, uh, Angelina Jolie one. Buddy Goes West, Life is Tough, A Providence, and The Price of Power. Excellent. Well, I'm always down for more spaghetti westerns. I can never get enough of those. So that's awesome. Going to enjoy those. And what do we got here? We've got a Blu-ray. We have... Hey, nice. We have Star Trek The Next Generation Redemption. I think I actually have this one. However, I did not get the snazzy slipcover with it. So thank you very much for that. Holy moly. Oh, this is a really nice slipcover. It's actually, a, it's like a gatefold slipcover. That's cool. Sweet. Well, this is vastly superior to the edition I have. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is great. I still need to get uh, Star Trek The Next Generation on Blu-ray. Um, I have a few of the one-off releases like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> a Marvel, like, Star Comics ash can. I didn't even know these existed. We have Marvel Comics Presents Alf. There you go. So, And then a special offer for a subscription to Star Comics on the back. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, look at this. That's fantastic. One of the original ALF comics. Oh, this is great. I have a bunch of Star Comics. They've actually just started to put out compilations of them. I don't think ALF is among them, though, probably for licensing reasons. So, very cool to have that. We got another Blu-ray. Ah, see, this is one of the ones I was waiting for. Um, I was going to buy this, and Skinsome said, no, no, don't buy it. I'll get it for you, and it'll be in your package. Okay. That was seven years ago. We have the remake of The Evil Dead, which I've never seen, because I've been waiting for this Blu-ray to arrive. <laughs> I've heard it's great. Um, I've heard it's like one of the actual good horror remakes. And uh, I've really been wanting to check it out. So I'm looking forward to finally being able to see this. Um, yeah, good stuff. <clears throat> Next up we have... Oh, what's this one? The Lovely Bones. I don't know this one. What is this film? With Mark Wahlberg, Rachel Weisz, Susan Sarandon, Stanley Tucci, Michael Imperioli, and Sa Sauris Ronan. A Thrilling Adventure. Let's see what it's about. It says, from Academy Award winning director... Oh, Peter Jackson. There we go. How have I never heard of this? I thought I knew what all his films were. Uh, comes the extraordinary story about one girl's life and everything that came after. When 14-year-old Susie Salmon was murdered, she left her unfinished life behind. But now from her place in a strange but beautiful in-between world, she must help her father catch her killer and protect her family before she can finally move on. Filled with thrilling suspense, hope, and the redeeming power of love, it's one of the best films of the year. Incredibly powerful, according to Harry Knowles of Ain't It Cool News. Cool. Harry Knowles, who actually has blocked Skin Slip, apparently, because uh, at one point Skin Slip said Harry looked like uh, Gwildor from the Masters of the Universe movie. <laughs> Which is not wrong. He does look like Gwildor from the Masters of the Universe movie. Like, come on. Anyway. Oh, yes. Here we go. This is the one that Stoud meant to send in his package. And it was one of the ones that I knew was coming. I was really looking forward to because it's one of my all-time favorite movies. And 
he forgot to put it in the package. <laughs> so he sent it to Skinslip to send to me in Skinslip's package. And we have the Black Hole Anniversary Edition. Now, before anyone asks, this is the corrected edition with the overture. He got the replacement when they offered it. So he made sure that this was the uh, correct one. And there you go. So really looking forward to checking this out. I've been wanting to get this on Blu-ray. I'm like wanting them to do a Blu-ray release of this for ages. Sadly, it's bare bones. It's not a deluxe edition by any stretch. It's only available through Disney Movie Club. But um, yeah, I love this movie. It was a favorite of mine as a kid. My first sort of foray into dark sci-fi. And uh, I've always loved it. It's just amazing film. Captain Nemo in space, but so dark for uh, for a Disney film. It's it's great stuff. Let's see. Next up we have... Well, we got a couple of paperbacks here just kind of loose. Let's take a look. Oh my god! It's one of the original Executioner novels. I love these. We've talked... Uh, Skinsup and I have talked about these on numerous occasions. Um, yeah, I don't have this one. This is great. I've only got like some of the early ones. Holy shit, this is the first printing of this one, too, from December 1976. Oh, man, this is awesome. We have The Executioner, uh, number 27, Dixie Convoy. Very nice. Ah, oh, thank you so much. I, I definitely want... Uh, we've talked about this before. Uh, this is a great series. If you're a fan of The Punisher, The Punisher was very much inspired by this. Uh, so this is a very similar kind of character. It's Mac Bolin, The Executioner. He comes back from Vietnam to find that the mob has killed his family, so he basically wages a one-man war against the mob. And it ultimately expands into a one-man war against crime and terrorism and organized crime and whatnot in general. And they're just really good action-adventure novels. They're a lot of fun, and um, I always really enjoy them. I, I bought the first few of them when they were reprinted a few years back and uh, really enjoyed them a lot. And uh, I've been wanting to pick up all the ones that were written by Don Pendleton himself, who's the original creator. Um, it was later licensed out to Gold Eagle Books, and then they continued the series with Ghost Riders. But the first 38, I believe, were written by the man himself, Don Pendleton. So um, those are the ones I'm most interested in collecting. So very cool stuff. Thank you very much for that. I'm definitely going to enjoy that. And we've got another paperback here. We have... Oh, cool. The only authorized edition, complete and unabridged, of Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan of the Apes. I don't think I actually have any of the Tarzan books. This is awesome. This is the first one. This is number one of 24. <laughs> the original Tarzan story. Ah, oh, I've never read this before. I've seen, like, many versions of Tarzan over the years. Always really enjoyed... Uh, the character Edgar Bryce Burroughs, of course, also did um, uh, the John Carter uh, novels as well, John Carter of Mars. But uh, yeah, great stuff, classic character. I was a big fan of the filmation animated series of Tarzan uh, back when I was a kid, of which sadly they've only released the first season on DVD. I really wish they would uh, release the rest of it. So let's see, we still got a long way to go here. What do we got here? This one is wrapped. I'm not sure. Oh, it says Rose. Okay, so um, actually, it says, I think it says Roy's, <laughs> which is funny because that's how she used to misspell her name all the time. Okay, so I will set this one aside for Rosie. And uh, yeah. All right. I think I know what it is. Uh, Skin Slip told me a while back, but uh, it uh, should be pretty cool. What do we got here? We have, oh, some Spawn trading cards. Very nice. Very cool. From 1995, so like an original set of Spawn trading cards. That's cool. I'll add that to the trading cards collection. I'll probably open it up at some point. It feels like we got some more trading cards here. What else do we have? Oh, Dragonheart. Widescreen mo uh, movie cards. Six super wide movie cards in tops wide vision. Very cool. Excellent. And then we got, oh, from Defiant Comics, we have Plasm. 
uh, zero issue trading cards beyond the imaginary limits. Excellent. I think I have, I might have a random issue of Plasm somewhere. I know I used to get a lot of ash cans when I collected, um, it wasn't Wizard Magazine, it was uh, Heroes Illustrated, that's what it was. Oh, sweet. <laughs> and this was from uh, another thing that uh, Stoudman sent me. It's the booklet for the Night Strangler. The Night Strangler was, of course, the uh, the movie, uh, the second movie in the uh, Kolchak, the Night Stalker uh, series. The second movie that ultimately led to the series. And uh, the version that I was sent did not include, it had the slipcover, but it didn't have the book. The booklet. So this is the booklet that goes with that. So I'll, uh, I'll be sure to include that. And let's see. We got some Mad Libs. Excellent. I used to play these all the time with my friends. So this is Spy Mad Libs. Very cool. This, uh, this could be something fun that uh, maybe I could do on the stream with those of you who come to my live streams. And uh, oh yeah, this would be this would be great. Kind of ties into the Fortnite stuff we've been doing lately, too, because, of course, they have all the James Bond-like uh, super spy things going on here. And let's see, what do we got here? Oh, this is nice. We have uh, the... Is this is Anchor Bay. Yeah, the Anchor Bay limited edition DVD of Halloween. This is number 22,803. So well, let's see here. Anchor Bay used to do these beautiful limited editions of stuff. Oh, look at that <laughs> picture of Nick Castle with uh, the Michael Myers mask. And we got a couple of other inserts. We've got a uh, lovely card here with the chapters. This is Halloween like you've never seen or heard it before. And then we have Halloween, the television version. That's interesting. Very cool. Uh, which I think is is different than the television version we got in the Scream Factory set. Because the Scream Factory set actually just uh, reincorporates the missing scenes. But otherwise it's the uncut, like uncensored theatrical version. Very cool. So this is like the actual proper television version with all of the television censorship intact. Very cool. So what do we got on here? We got full frame pre presentation reformatted to fit four by three TVs. Um, oh, interesting. So it's not cropped to widescreen. It's actually the full screen version. And then, and then, okay, the Halloween television version is presented in widescreen. What? <laughs> so how come the theatrical versions in full frame? And the TV version is in widescreen. What? 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 Now I'm confused. Okay. Anyway, uh, we got original theatrical trailers, television spots, radio spots, talent bios, stills and poster gallery, behind the scenes still gallery, Halloween Unmasked 2000. I think this might be the reason that uh, Skins have sent this to me because it's not available. I don't think that documentary is available anywhere else. Uh, produced and directed by Mark Cerulli. Very cool. So yeah, no, thank you very much. Um, and I like the uh, lenticular cover as well. What is that? Uh, the lenticularness is a little, a little janky, but that's okay. I like it. <laughs> I, I like it. There we go. All right, cool. Always down for more editions of Halloween, especially when they've got exclusive extras and stuff. Oh, we got another stray paperback. Let's see what we got here. We have oh sweet! <laughs> I can't remember if I <coughs> I can't remember if I have this one or not. I think I have one. So I don't know if it's this one though. But uh, we got the novelization of Mortal Kombat, the the movie, which I think is one of the best video game to screen adaptations we've had. Certainly from that era, anyway. I think we've had some better ones since. But uh, excellent. Well, I'm definitely going to enjoy uh, giving this a read one afternoon. But uh, we got some uh, black and white photos from the movie in there. Very nice. Very nice indeed. 
yeah, I loved Mortal Kombat. I thought it was a great, uh, great fun. Uh, the martial arts in it actually are, are genuinely fantastic. Um, it's really good, really good actioner with a rocking soundtrack. Some great music in that soundtrack. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, we have. Oh yes, I think uh, yeah, I remember. I remember being told these were coming. I've had these sitting in my Amazon cart for so long, and I almost bought them so many times. I'm glad I didn't, because I completely forgot Skins that was sending them to me. We have... Ah, oh, this is... I've wanted these for so long. We have 1990, The Bronx Warriors, uh, which another viewer sent me on DVD a number of years ago. It wasn't available on Blu-ray yet. So we have 1990, The Bronx Warriors, and then the direct sequel, Escape from the Bronx... And then the kind of, but not really sequel, but sort of set in the same universe kind of movie, The New Barbarians. <laughs> there you go. So this is basically the Bronx Warriors trilogy by Enzo uh, G. Castellari. Um, yeah, great stuff. I love these movies. They're, they're wonderful, fun, cheesy, post-apocalyptic uh, movies. I love this... Uh, painted cover it makes it look so much more badass than it actually is but you know they're fun i like these a lot it's good stuff i'm going to enjoy watching these again and in high definition and i've actually never seen the new barbarians so this one will be totally new to me maybe i'll just do a triple bill of these one day and just have a bronx warriors day you know it's great stuff and these have tons of extras on them too got uh, audio commentaries and interviews and you know you got fred williamson can't go wrong with some fred williamson yeah this is great stuff yeah thank you so much definitely going to enjoy these as you know i'm a a big fan of these types of uh you know the post-apocalyptic movies and whatnot i really need more of them but uh that's uh that now this one is wrapped and is not visible, so I'm wondering if this is the mystery one. Maybe I'll just set this one aside. I was told there's a mystery one that I'm not allowed to look at yet, so... Okay. Oh, what is this? Oh my god! Holy shit! This is, like, super rare! Wow! This is the THX certified Anchor Bay limited tin edition of Evil Dead 2 dead by dawn this is like this is like a super duper collector's item you can't you just can't find this anymore Let, let's check this out we got limited edition oh look at that like big tin i remember they did a bunch of these tin sets for horror movies and it was before i really started collecting dvd i was still all like fuck dvd it's all about laser disc and uh so i just kind of like scoffed at these and i saw it's like look at them putting them in tins trying to make them all collectible and they're just shitty dvd they should do that with laser disc i was very much a laser disc snob but of course now i'm like i was stupid i should have just embraced the new technology because now i missed out on all these wonderful collector's editions but um this is very nice got this lovely um color book with it well and uh Some color photos in there. This is a really nice uh, deluxe edition. <laughs> Groovy. And then we got an insert here. Just a card, basically, with the uh, artwork. And then chapter selection. Very nice. Oh, coming fall 2000. Evil Dead. Hail to the King. I think I actually played the demo of that. Like, no, actually I didn't. Because this is the PS1 game i played the ps2 game that came out a few years later because there, there was another one that came out a few years later oh my god summoner an, an ad for summoner i remember summoner 2 on the ps2 i um oh this was actually also playstation 2 yeah very cool was it summoner 2 or was it this one? i don't remember but i remember seeing stuff about summoner uh because i was a big fan of red faction so, oh, this is interesting. So instead of it being in a keep case inside the case, it's actually in a jewel case inside the case. That's different. It's literally just a CD jewel case with DVD written on it instead of CD. That, that's, 
I've never seen that before. That's crazy. And you can tell it's an older dual layer disc because it has that kind of gold color to it. You see? Yeah. They did that back in the day to denote how much more awesomer dual layer was than single layer. You don't want those those lame silver single layer discs. No, no, you want the you want the gold dual layer discs. The the gold makes it better. Well, no, actually the fact is dual layer makes it better, so no no disc flipping. That is really cool. Yeah, I'll definitely add this to my uh, multitude of editions of Evil Dead that I have now. So what has this actually got on it? We have um, so widescreen presentation as an anamorphic uh, set of enhanced for 16 by 9. Also has the full frame presentation. That's cool. Audio commentary with Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, uh, co-writer Scott Spiegel, and special makeup effects artist Greg Nicotero. Featurette, the gore, the merrier, theatrical trailer, Evil Dead Hail to the King video game previews. There's like a featurette about the video game. Still galleries, talent bios, uh, theatrical poster, replica, which I think is gone. I don't think that's actually in here. 48-page uh, full-color booklet, and blah, 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 blah. Only 50,000 copies available. This is number 25,140. So there you go. Very nice indeed. That is freaking beautiful okay what else we got here we got uh looks like some more cards let's uh take a look at these here oh right and we got hazelnut m ms which i think skin slip got in a i think it was a dinosaur dracula package said she didn't really like hazelnut and i'm like i like hazelnut she's like okay i'll put it in your box okay cool thanks yay <laughs> um Hey, speaking of Beetlejuice, we got some Beetlejuice cartoon cards. Very nice indeed. The ghost with the most. Excellent. Five cards and one glow sticker. Oh, very nice. And then, uh, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> that thing everybody thinks I'm a huge fan of. The Nightmare Before Christmas cards. Yes, well, thank you. I'll uh, add that to the pile of Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. Oh, Vertigo trading cards. So big mystery there as to which ones are in there. I guess we'll never know because we'll never open it. <laughs> we might do a special video where we open those. Um, oh, God. <laughs> and then we have Geno Superview cards. That's Godzilla name only. Yeah. Godzilla 98 Super View card. So this is like the super wide vision cards or whatever. Yeah, very cool. I'll have to uh, check that out as well. So that has five cards in it. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, now it looks like we've got a stack of comics here. Let's see what we got. We have... Oh, nice. It looks like we have a bunch of Star Trek comics. So we have Star Trek The Next Generation, issue number 47. Very nice. DC did great Star Trek comics. I actually have collected editions of a bunch of them. I mean, just look at look at like the renditions of the familiar characters. I mean, they, they look amazing. It's just a fantastic job that they did on these. But they had great artwork and um, great stories, too. I remember... You know, the collected editions I read, the stories were, were fantastic and really captured the, the essence of Star Trek quite nicely. So, always down to... I wish we had more collections of them, actually, because uh, when the license reverted to someone else, then we have issue 65. There we go. Um, when the license reverted to whoever's doing them now, Image, I think... Um, or ID, or no, he said IDW? I can't remember. Anyway, another company's doing them now. Um, all these years and years and years of DC comics just got tossed aside. Like, there's, there's been no reprints of them or anything. It's like, what? Like, come on, there's so many of them. And then we have Star Trek number 49. So this would be Original Crew Adventures. Um, yeah, for me, Star Trek, uh, I'm all about Original Crew and Next Generation, basically. Those are my two. Those are my jam. And then we have issue number 48. 
Very nice. It's like Kirk going toe to toe with a Klingon there. So 48, 49. Do we actually have some sequential issues here? And 64. Okay. <laughs> have issue number 64. It's actually a really cool cover. It says, Where One Man Has Gone Before. Very nice. Yeah, see, I mean, look at that. It's, it's beautiful. It's great. Love these old comics. When are these ones from? 1994. Yeah. Great stuff. Love some Trek comics. So yeah, I guess that's one of those things I'll just have to track down the original issues at some point because it doesn't look like we're ever going to get reprints of them. But uh, And then we have, oh, cool, a whole stack of comics here. We have Challengers of the Unknown. Nice. Let's uh, slide these out here. So what do we got? So we got issue number one. And, okay. So, we have issue number one. Issue number two. Very cool. By Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Okay, I can see why you sent this to me now. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, of course, are probably best known for their collaboration on Batman, where they did The Long Halloween, and, um, what is it, those other ones, Dark Victory, uh, Catwoman Went in Rome, and uh, Haunted Night, the Halloween specials. Um, I have the collected editions of all of those, and they're freaking amazing. They're so good. Uh, we got issue three. I'm assuming this is all eight issues and that it's never been collected. Issue four. An ad for Steven Seagal out for justice on the back. Oh, and hey, you can get the Atari Lynx for only 99 bucks. Very nice. <laughs> and be sure to check out The Doors, Oliver Stone's The Doors, when it hits theaters in March. <laughs> And let's see, and then we got issue number five. Oh, hey, look, Kevin Costner's going to be in a Robin Hood movie as Robin Hood. He'll be great because he's very British. And issue number six. Oh, nice. Ad for Tales from the Crypt on the back. Very cool. That's an anthology horror series I really need to get. It's very conspicuously absent from my collection. And then we have issue number seven. And then uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme and Jean-Claude Van Damme starring in uh, Double Impact coming soon to theaters everywhere. Sure, check that out. And then finally, issue number eight, the epic conclusion of Challengers of the Unknown. Oh, and hey, there's a new Child's Play coming out. Awesome. I bet it will be amazing. <laughs> oh, very cool stuff I'm definitely going to enjoy checking those out um, love that creative team they do good shit I gotta figure out how to get this back in the bag there we go excellent um, I'm gonna maybe Set these down here. Okay. Hey, what do we got here? We got a special Spider Man collection uh, Birth of Venom. Cool. Oh, this is nice. So, what all does this have in it? We have. <laughs> it has Secret Wars number eight, which I actually have. Yeah, I actually have the original issue of that. So that's where Spider-Man first discovers the alien costume is when he's on the uh, the battle world, basically, with the um, other superheroes. Oh, it doesn't have the full issue, I noticed. It just has the Spidey finds the black costume part of that issue, which is like two pages. But uh, And then, of course, when it was introduced into the main series right there. And then that became ultimately 
you know, resulted in the creation of Venom. Very cool. I've never actually read that story arc before, so this will be interesting stuff. So it co collects together uh, Secret Wars, number 8, Amazing Spider-Man, number 252 to 259, number 298 to 300, number 315 to 317, and annual number 25, Fantastic Four, number 274, and Web of Spider-Man, number 1. Yeah, because, of course, the black costume was something that he kept for quite some time. and uh, But the Venom part of that wasn't always a part of the story. It, it, it came later. But um, that's very cool. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to enjoy checking that out. It's, there's a lot there that I've never actually read before. And this one, I remember this is one that uh, Skinsub sent me because she said she uh, actually bought an extra one by mistake and knew that I would love it, so... Uh, sent it my way. We have Volume 1 of Excalibur, the epic collection. Um, no, it's not the story of King Arthur. This is actually an X-Men title featuring uh, several other members of the team. we got Nightcrawler, Kitty Pride, Captain Britain, uh, Rachel Summers, and who's the other one here? I'm not sure who the other one is. But... Um, The metamorphic, oh, Captain Britain and his paramour, the metamorphic Megan. Okay, I guess that's who it is, Megan. I didn't know who she was. Anyway, very cool. Definitely going to enjoy checking these out. These ones I've never read before. I remember uh, seeing them around when they when the series first came out, but it wasn't one that I collected. It was kind of after I'd uh, stopped collecting. Oh, what's this? Was it start with a graphic novel? Sword is drawn. It does. Starts with a graphic novel. Very cool. And then uh, goes into the main series. Yeah, see, because I could see... Uh, I remember seeing that on the shelves, the first issue. So this contains uh, Captain Britain numbers 1 and 2. Excalibur numbers 1 through 11. Special edition. I guess that's what it was, the Excalibur special edition. I just noticed it had kind of like... Uh, like the color is more more like um you know shaded and and painted rather than the sort of more solid typical comic book covers um contains that a material marvel comics uh material for marvel comics presents numbers 31 through 38 and mighty world of marvel number seven and 14 and 15. and there you go so all told about about 500 pages worth of comics Thereabouts, 500 pages worth of funny, 485 pages of funny books right there. Very cool. Yeah, I love these epic collections. I've got a bunch of them myself. Uh, as you guys will know, if you watch my comic book updates, I've been collecting things like the Tomb of Dracula ones, and uh, I've got the first Amazing Spider-Man, the first Fantastic Four. I've got the first four volumes of Incredible Hulk, and um, I got one of the X-Men ones. But, uh, yeah, I love those epic collections because it's a great way to get a huge chunk of issues of a series in one go. And they're often fairly affordable when you think about it. They typically go for about, you know, anywhere from 25 to 50 bucks, depending if they're on sale or not. And if you're in the U.S. or Canada, they go for about 50 bucks uh, cover price here. Um, but you can sometimes get them on sale. Um, and you get about 20 issues in each volume. Um, which, considering that a lot of them are older comics that now would, you know, be collector's prices, it's a really affordable way to be able to collect those stories and, and check them out. And let's see, we've got something at the bottom here, a couple things. Oh, cool. This is too cool. Holy shit. We have Transformers Collected Comics. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is nice. Like magazine size reprints. Now, of course, Skinsip knows I have like the, the Marvel series, at least the early issues, reprinted several times over in different editions. But this is cool. Like I've never seen uh, this particular edition before. The story begins. Oh, wow. That's actually really cool. I really like the... Uh, the color reproduction in this it looks uh, a little different than what we've seen in the other editions a little bit more shading and stuff um 
this is really nice. So how many issues is this? Does this do the full four issue series? No, this does the first three issues. Very nice. And then we have Collected Comics number two, which has that amazing painted uh, cover with Shockwave. There's nothing on the back. The back's just kind of blank. It's weird. And then, uh, yeah, the only, the only uh, complaint I would have is it doesn't reprint any of the covers. It reprints the stories, but it doesn't actually reprint the covers. But um, that's okay. It's, it's really cool to actually have these stories reprinted in the larger format like this. I like this. And then it just kind of goes. So it's the first six issues, basically. Which is very, very cool. Wow. I, I didn't even know this existed. Like, this is amazing. Let me just see here. Yeah. When uh, Megatron catches up with Shockwave and blasts him out of the mountain. Ugh. Epic. Love it. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. This is uh, definitely a, a very welcome addition to the Transformers comic collection. Holy moly. Okay. So this was uh, I mean, just a random bag. All right. So I guess I was right. I think this is the mystery item, which I don't know that if I'm supposed to open it. Hang on. We have the note. We have the note. Let's check it out here. This should answer all my questions about everything I was confused about. Okay. What? Uh, oh. <laughs> well, I think I just spoiled what the surprise is. Um, I, I thought it was... I didn't realize it was to go with the... Cool. Well... I guess I'll, uh, I hope you enjoy this random assortment of stuff. The only part I can read because it doesn't spoil anything. Okay, well, I know what that is now, but, um, I'll act surprised when I'm supposed to open it. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Come, come over, come over here. I have to read the, uh, the message that Skin Slip sent. Hold on, I'll bring the, uh. I'll bring the microphone over so you can hear. All right, so let's see. So, Beetlejuice and Star Comics are from Dinosaur Dracula. Simpsons Thing is a pack-in from Pop-Tarts back when the Simpsons movie came out. Sorry about the seven-year wait for Evil Dead. <laughs> uh, final score is a crazy action film. I need to do a cast stream with me for it because you will boggle at it from, I think, the Netherlands. Uh, Lovely Bones is a heartbreaker. Still haven't seen it myself. The novels are duplicates. Sorry for the conditions. Hey, I don't care. I'm just happy to have them because they're cool. Um, the spaceship goes on the back of the Gundam. The laser boner is <laughs> part of a light sword, which handles should be there somewhere, I think. Um, it's... Oh, right, yeah, the, uh, the the thing for Rosie is a book called Monster Squad by Heather Wixon, which is a book of interviews with special effects makeup artists, so that's the thing for Rosie. Uh, Mad Libs are to do with the stream, of course. Um, I knew you would appreciate the real TV cut of Halloween, yes. The aspect ratios are a printing error. They are swapped. Oh, okay, so that, that makes a little more sense. The TV cut would be full frame. Yeah, I was wondering what was going on there. Um, and yes, that special feature is unique to that edition and the 30th anniversary face box set. Sorry about the condition of the Evil Dead 2 tin. I received it as such. I have, I had no issues with the condition of the tin. It looked lovely. So, uh, Challenges of the Unknown is a Tim Sale, Jeff Loeb early collaboration, and it is very good. Upgrading mine to a trade paper back soon. Oh, okay. The mystery movie is covered in wrapping paper. The tissue paper was just protection. Birth of Venom has been replaced in my collection by Epic Collections, of course, yeah. Um, I've had these Transformers comics 
for decades, and I thought you would enjoy the larger art since you have a boner for such things. Did I spoil the name of the movie in the note? I don't remember this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, you did. You gave both the name of the movie and the alternate title on the slipcover. In the note. <laughs> skin slips in the chat right now um so yeah i i mean i open the note because usually the note is just about the things and i uh yeah oops so should i just open it up and show the people since i know what it is now <laughs> i did uh, well i did read the note I can't remember what I wrote. Okay, hold on. Uh, where's the note? The note. <clears throat> the note. First, the Terminator 2 slipcover is actually a super limited slip for Shocking Dark. First sentence. <laughs> That's not the movie. Oh, okay. Why are you even mentioning that? I bought the limited edition, and then two weeks later on Seven's mailing list, they offered even more limited signed slipcovers, so you get the extra. Merry late Christmas. The movie is a joint with Stoud gift and should not be opened until showtime. I hope you enjoy this random assortment. So, well, now I'm confused, because I didn't see that in there anywhere. The slipcover should be in the box somewhere in... Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Let me uh, take another look here. Yes, I didn't see that anywhere. Um... That... Oh, here it is. Hold on. Here it is. I see. I was confused. Okay. So this is the movie that I don't know what it is. That's not what this is, the thing that I thought it was. So it says, uh, mystery movie, do not open. Hint, sucks more than blood. Don't open. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know what it is. So this is, this is really cool. This is the one that uh, Skinslip was talking about, uh, the slipcover. So the movie was actually uh, released as Shocking Dark, but in some markets it was released as Terminator 2. So Terminator 2 is the title they don't never go by because, you know, they would get sued. Um, but when Severin released the Blu-ray of Shocking Dark, they released... A limited, very limited edition slipcover with the alternate poster art with the alternate title. And there you go. So that's very cool. Now I just need to get the movie. <laughs> and then I can uh, I can put the slipcover with it. So there you go. Very, that's actually very cool. I, I really appreciate that. Because as you know, I'm a massive Terminator 2 fan. And, um, sorry. Um having that sort of rare knockoff tie-in um, thing is, is very cool. So thank you very much for that. All right. There we go. Confusion sorted out. I'm, I, I think we sorted that out. <laughs> All right. So whatever this other movie is, we have to wait until... Uh, Skin Slip and Stoud Man and I are all together and we're going to watch it, I guess, as a group viewing. So, there you go. So that'll be on our Twitches, most likely. Um, wow, that is, so that is a fantastic uh, pile of stuff. And definitely well worth the wait. That was, uh, that was amazing. And there was a bunch of things there that you told me you were sending that I'd forgotten that I'm glad I didn't go out and buy because that would have been silly. <laughs> and uh, definitely some crazy rare collector's items there too, which uh, 
uh, will definitely get a place of honor in my collection as they should. That, that Halloween set and the Evil Dead 2 set um, were especially big surprises. Um, that was amazing. And uh, great to finally have the black hole. <laughs> After it went into the black hole of memory of Stoud and was not included. But um, very cool. Oh, well, this was an epic length package opening, as I knew it was going to be, because... Hey, I, I told you guys at the top, that package had some heft to it, and now you can see why. Anyway, thanks again, Skin Slip. You're awesome as always. You know I'm going to love every single one of those things you sent. That's, that's an awesome package. Thank you so much. Can I pick up my presents? Um, yes, they're over. Two Roy's? They're over there. Gee, Skin Slip. Oh, there's, uh, yeah, there's the one uh, on the couch. There's the one for you. Let you see Rose check out her present here. Not that one. Not that one. It's on the couch. One. On the couch. Yeah. Roy's. It, it says Roy's on it. I know. How could you skin slip? Roy's. Slide? All right, check it out. It's obviously a book. Yes. Let's just throw things at me. Ooh. What is it? Monster Squad. Read it. Oh, it's like celebrating the artists behind cinema's most memorable creatures. Yes. That's cool. So I was telling Skin Slip about how I've been watching a lot of old horror movies and stuff and how you're really impressed by like the makeup and the effects and stuff. This is a book all about that. And right. apparently it's one of the best books ever of, on the subject. Oh, this is... Yeah, this is great. You're going to love this. You get to find out who all those people are that I'm always talking about. Hmm. You re did you read the letter? You read it. Okay. Dear Rose, Auntie Chance heard you like special effects as of late... When I was a small girl, a kind stranger gifted me a book that opened my love of cinema, and I hope this does the same. Never Aww. stop dreaming, chance. There you go. Thank yeah, you. this this is really this looks really good. I, I've never actually read this one, but uh, since I was saying it's one of the all-time greats, so it has different chapters on different um, effects artists. I have to find something. And stuff. Who's the one that did the thing? Rob Bottin. I guarantee you, he's in there. <laughs> It's spelled Bottin, B-O-T-T-I-N. Yeah. Um, Should be listed in there. He is. No, let me see. It's Rob, right? Yeah. Let me see. He's not in there. Let's see. Unless yeah. they did it, Robert. Uh, maybe. Oh, he's not. Well, he's... what the hell? No! <laughs> Table of contents. Okay, so I guess it doesn't have everybody, but it has a lot of people. We've got Alec Guinness, John Dykstra, Kevin Haney, Jen Raspinall. Let me take okay. my shoes off. Uh, Phil Tippett. Phil Tippett is one you would know. He did some a bunch of the effects for RoboCop. Oh, okay. And uh, does a lot. Of, did a lot of stop motion animation and stuff. So. Yeah. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. All the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed. Um, so that's it from me to you for now. Um, lots more stuff to come. You know, contrary to the rumors, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Um, be sure to check out my Twitch. I stream just about every day. Um, big thanks to all my Patreon sponsors. And to everyone who supports my streams and videos and, uh, you know, for using my Amazon links to buy stuff because uh, it all helps to support the stream and, you know, allows me to keep doing what I do for you. All right. See you next time. Till then, sayonara.